last week, Pope Francis released a new modu proprio dealing with predator priests. It was obviously meant to signal that the church was taking seriously the problem of sex abuse in the church. I characterized at that time the modu proprio as being more of the same, especially considering that what was promulgated last week was essentially the Cardinal's soupage and whirl plan from the February Bishop's Sex Seminar. The plan did some nice things, including raising the age of what is considered a minor in the church to the age of 18, and included the abuse of vulnerable adults by abusive priests. But the problem is that the plan called for the bishops to investigate themselves, with no lay involvement, and the Metropolitan being in charge of these investigations. Given that former Cardinal McCarrick was a Metropolitan, he'd be in charge of investigating charges made against his fellow bishops, and most likely his Metropolitan peers would investigate any charges made against McCarrick or someone like him. Given how pervasive the rot is in the hierarchy of the church at this moment, those of us paying attention to just how bad the situation is in the church at this moment were not fooled by the modu proprio. It is business as usual. Sadly, many Catholics were fooled, as evident through those reactions I saw on mainstream social media. Thankfully, you and I weren't the only ones who saw through this. A new reaction has come to the modu proprio, and it's a doozy. Complicit Clergy, the relatively new alternative media outlet for Catholics, is reporting that a lawsuit will be filed in Minnesota against the Vatican. Five men who allege that they were sexually abused by Catholic priests when they were minors are planning to sue the Vatican. The five men are demanding the names of thousands of predator priests they claim to have been kept secret by the Holy See. This is a major charge, one that most of us have been making for some time now. We've known that the Holy See has been covering things up since long before the present pontificate, that the cover-up went to the very top of the church hierarchy going back to at least the 1980s, if not earlier. The Lavender Mafia have been enthroned in the Vatican for a long, long time, occupying the highest reaches of the important administrative and clerical positions in the church for decades. Some have hypothesized that this enabled them to keep Popes John Paul II and Benedict XVI as the next best thing to prisoners in the Vatican, in terms of enforcing the laws of the church and the moral laws of God, or at least against the priests and bishops who commit heinous crimes. In the news release announcing the lawsuit, the Minnesota attorney, Jeff Anderson, said that purpose of the suit was to show that the Vatican tried to cover up actions by top church officials, including former St. Paul Minneapolis Archbishop John Neinstedt. The lawsuit that was filed Tuesday seeks the release of 3,400 names of priests who were referred to the Vatican for credible cases of abuse. That number was actually released by the Vatican itself in 2014 as an act of apparent transparency, which early in his pontificate Francis seemed to be really focused on. You can recall in those days how quickly bad bishops were punished for committing certain kinds of crimes, mostly living overly wealthy lifestyles at the expense of the laity. The so-called Bishop of Bling, Franz Peter Tebarts von Elst of Germany, comes to mind, which, as you may recall, happened in March of 2014. In those days, the illusion of reform was in the air, and the vast majority of Catholics in the West were optimistic and hopeful that the bad old days of abusive priests and the bishops enabling them from the Vatican were finally over. Many of us intuitively knew that the hierarchy was at some level complicit in the sex crimes of the clergy, but few gave voice to that, even in those days. The illusion of meaningful reforms gave many people hope that we had finally turned the page in the sex abuse crisis. This was, of course, all before Morse Letizia and the crimes of Ted McCarrick becoming public knowledge and how that all destroyed the illusion that the church cared that much about sexual morality, at least in this day and age. The complicit clergy piece provides some context. I'm going to quote it directly. Quote, The lawsuit comes less than a week after Pope Francis issued a groundbreaking new church law requiring all Catholic priests and nuns worldwide to report clergy sexual abuse and cover-ups by their superiors to church authorities. The law is part of a new effort to hold the Catholic hierarchy accountable, but the new law stops short of requiring the crimes to be reported to police, and abuse victims and their advocates say it's not enough, since it essentially tasks discredited bishops who have mishandled abuse for decades with police in their own. End quote. That's pretty much the same point I and others have been making for some time now, there is no requirement by this modu proprio for bishops or lay employees of the church to report crimes to the police. It's clear that 
the enablers in the hierarchy are terrified of being taken to court or being investigated by American and Western governments, as those governments have legal mechanisms available to make life very difficult for the church. These mechanisms include the seizing of church property, the locking of financial accounts, and, of course, arrests of those responsible for various crimes. What I'm describing are typically employed during a federal RICO investigation, and there are indications that a RICO investigation is coming in the next few months. We are now presently in the pre-RICO phase of the state having to deal with the crimes of those occupying offices in the church because we lack the ability to deal with this ourselves. The laity have not been empowered in this at all. The times we live in are not exactly unique in the history of the church. Yes, things are probably at the worst they've been in many centuries, if not ever. The rot runs deep and goes right to the top of the hierarchy. But in the past, there have been times when secular authorities had to save the church from itself. There have been cases of Holy Roman Emperors vetoing the election of a pope, usually on the grounds that the proposed winner was either a heretic or so morally bankrupt that they'd be a disaster for the church. This was the case in the papal conclave of 1903, which followed the death of Pope Leo XIII after his incredible reign of 25 years. The Austrian Emperor Franz Josef asserted the right claimed by certain Catholic rulers to veto a candidate for the papacy, blocking the election of the leading candidate Cardinal Secretary of State Mariano Rampolla. Due to that action, the conclave chose the man who would become Pope St. Pius X, Giuseppe Melchior Sarto, who didn't really want the job anyway, but would become the legendary Pope in the war against the modernists. That kind of intervention is unlikely today, given that the Second Vatican Council adopted the Masonic value of the separation of church and state, as well as for the obvious reason that there are no Holy Roman Emperors to intervene on the church's behalf, to prevent a Pope Francis II from winning the next conclave, whenever that will be. But there are mechanisms that can be employed by the Italian government to prevent certain corrupt bishops from attending the conclave in the first place, such as blocking the entry of any suspected of being sexual predators or of covering up for sexual predators. Whether that is employed remains to be seen. The lawsuit in Minnesota is worth paying attention to. Will the church respond? Will the Vatican attempt to stonewall the lawsuit? Will they ignore it due to it being an international in nature? That might be a bit of a stretch for the Vatican, considering that the Vatican may be a sovereign city-state, but it does operate in the U.S., and state governments have jurisdiction to investigate the alleged crimes. A better question is how many more states will see similar lawsuits filed. I'm betting we'll see several more of these filed in the coming days or weeks, especially considering that the motu proprio didn't fool anyone who has been paying attention and isn't willing to give Francis and company the benefit of the the doubt anymore, based on a misplaced ideological love for the focus of his papacy, which is obviously secular and progressively political in nature. The Western media was singing Francis' praises over the motu proprio, and in some quarters describing it as Francis taking charge of the sex abuse crisis in the church, or that the church was finally taking seriously the problems among the clergy. That is, of course, ridiculous, given that the bishops will be able to investigate their peers with no lay involvement and with no mandate to involve law enforcement, and it's ridiculous because the bishops refuse to acknowledge homosexuality as the problem. It'll be worth watching to see how long it takes for the Vatican to release the names of the priests suspected of being predators, and it will be especially interesting to see what bishops these priests answered to. I expect to see several bishops' names prominent due to the frequency of their priests being accused of predatory behavior. There are reasons that places like Boston were the epicenters of the American clerical sex abuse crisis, including and especially the presence of complicit bishops who recruited men like this on purpose for the priesthood. And by men like this, I mean homosexuals. I know that many people argue that there is no link to predatory behavior and homosexuality, but the research says otherwise. And the John Jay report clearly showed that 80% of the abuse cases were perpetrated by men on teenage boys. That is homosexual predation, pure and simple. Many homosexuals of goodwill fully admit that they've got this problem in their so-called community. It is long since time the church returned to embracing the traditional moral norms of the church, which includes barring these kinds of men from service in the priesthood. Anything else is meaningless in the face of a crisis of modernism and sexual morality. Why do you, what do you think about this? Do you think this lawsuit is warranted? What are the chances that this will take off and more lawsuits will be announced? around the country, and even around the world. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for your continued support of this channel. If you want to support the work done here, there are options in the description of the video. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.